to the third lecture of week 1 which is on stress strain relationship discussion on stress and strain relationship we have started uh, from lecture 2 where we have defined stress and strain separately and discussed types of each and then we have derived expression for biaxial as well as triaxial system so in this lecture we will uh, solve uh, example related to stress and strain relationship and then we will discuss a few more stresses. So, let us start this and here I am having example 1 and it states that stresses are to be determined at the inside corner of an opening in a cylindrical shell by applying a strain gauge at the location. So, in this problem a cylindrical shell is considered where an opening is made and due to this opening whatever strains are generated that are measured through strain gauge which is the instrument to find out the strain at a particular location. And cylindrical shell is made of carbon steel with E value 20 into 10 power 9 Newton per meter square and mu is 0.3. The strain reading from the three gauges are epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z as mentioned here. What we need to compute is the stresses in the three direction at the opening and second part focuses on stresses in two direction of the cylindrical shell where sigma z will be equal to 0. So, these two parts we will solve for example 1. So, let us start with part A. So, in this part we have to calculate stress in three direction at the opening and if you see here we have epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z. So, opening uh, whatever we have discussed that is basically of rectangular type and uh, we need to find out stresses considering values of strain and relation between strain and uh, stress are already derived in lecture 2 for uh, triaxial system. And what are the known values? E and mu are known values along with uh, strains in all three direction. So, that uh, example is not very much complicated that is very simple. We have epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z expressions where I know E and I know mu. So, putting the value of epsilon E and mu we can have the equation in terms of sigma x, sigma y and sigma z and these are three equations where sigma x, y and z all three are unknown. So, we have three equations and three unknown. So, that can be solved simultaneously. Once we solve that simultaneously, we can obtain the value of uh, stresses in three direction and sigma x here is 1.158 in times power 7 Newton per meter square. Sigma y and sigma z contain these values respectively. So, in this way we solve the uh, stresses generated in three direction when I know the strain value and if I know the stress values I can calculate strain in all three directions. Okay? So, that is the part 1. In second part we need to find out stresses in two direction of cylindrical shell where sigma z is equal to 0. So, here I am having the relation of sigma x as well as sigma y as a function of epsilon x and epsilon y. This is biaxial system, these equations we have all already derived and while putting the value of strain E and mu, we can uh, have uh, sigma x as well as sigma y. Okay. So, sigma x uh, it is simply the expression based not complicated uh, solution is required for that. So, sigma x comes out as 1.077 into 10 power 7 Newton per meter square and sigma y we can obtain as uh, 0 0.923 into 10 power 7. So, these values are directly uh, formula based where uh, stress if no we can calculate strain and vice versa also. So, this is the simple example to compute stress whatever we have discussed for biaxial as well as triaxial system. Next we have the materials of construction that is the mechanical properties. Now what happens uh, you have seen that stress and strain relationship and that vary for each material. You cannot have that two material have same uh, trend, no it is different. Now why it is different? Because 
each material will have different crystalline structure either it is a uh, very simple or it is complicated or um, uh, there may be different size of uh, molecules available in that and uh, their geometries are different uh, geometry of molecules are different so the crystalline structure of material vary okay material to material and uh, so based on that we can define some properties and uh, we call these properties as mechanical properties and in this uh, slide we are focusing on some of the important mechanical property the first property is the strength so strength represents the capacity of the material to withstand external forces okay so that uh, mm, when external forces are applied to an object it will try to deform it okay so external forces uh, should be resisted by the object so strength is defined in that way so that up to what extent it can resist the uh, external forces or uh, deformation okay so depending upon the nature of force strength can be classified as tensile compressive shear and impact okay so basically strength determines strength speaks about that how much a particular material resist the force which are acting on this so strength can be defined uh, that uh, for how long the material can stand can withstand the external forces or can resist the external forces so that it should not be deformed okay so this is one property second property is stiffening and rigidity it is a measure of the ability of the material to resist deformation and modulus of rigidity is used to express this property and next i am having elasticity elasticity you understand that uh, when um, uh, we apply stress to a particular object it deforms when we remove that uh, load or stress that uh, uh, the material will uh, regain its original the material will regain its original shape so that we can call as elasticity of the material so in the design of most of the component permanent deformation are generally avoided and material is utilized with the view to retaining its elasticity so while designing we uh, we usually avoid permanent deformation because uh, until unless it will be in elastic region if any uh, deform if any deformability will appear it will regain its original shape okay so which is not possible in uh, and that is not possible in permanent failure so elasticity is a important property as it determine that up to what extent we can consider the values uh, we can consider the parameters while designing another property is the ductility which is a measure of deformability of the material determined by percentage of elongation or reduction of area what is the meaning of deformability of the material for example if i am having this uh, wire if i am having this wire okay and if i pull if i pull this wire from this side okay if i pull this wire from this side up to how long it will retain its shape though deformability though deformation will take place but it will remain as a wire okay up to how long it can maintain its shape without breaking okay so as much as length can be increased before Uh, before breaking of this wire so that increment in length basically speaks about the ductility of the material next property is the toughness it is the ability of the material to absorb energy in deformation in the plastic range and is measured by finding out the total area of stress strain curve so this is basically the toughness where uh, how much energy is absorbed in deformation that quantifies okay so next property i am having is the hardness and hardness basically speaks about the surface characteristic 
uh, of the material. It means it uh, when I am uh, when the material will be very hard, it will resist for it will resist the scratching. Okay, scratch are not formed very easily on the uh, very hard uh, material surface. Okay, so it is basically the surface characteristic. And then we have the creep. It is a slow and progressive deformation of a material with time under constant stress. So, you see in this way we have defined different properties, uh, different pro mechanical properties of the material and now we will focus on those property which we usually use in designing okay? and that we can derive through stress and strain relationship. So, first property in that case is the proportional limit. Now, if you consider this particular diagram, uh, here we have stress on y axis and strain on x axis and here we have a uh, trend of a particular material. So, point A on this diagram indicates the greatest stress up to which Hooke's law of proportionality of stress of strain is observed. It means this is uh, almost a linear part of a material. Okay. So, where this linearity disappear, we call that point as the proportional limit because up to proportional limit it follows the Hooke's law. Okay. So, that point A is basically the extent of uh, linearity you can understand. Okay. So, this is one uh, property, another property is the elastic limit, elastic limit you see. So, this is basically the maximum stress beyond which permanent deformation will take place as it is shown through point B. So, without having permanent uh, uh, deformation, how much stress can be sustained by the material that is represented by elastic limit and that is very close to the proportional limit. Next we have the yield stress. It is the stress at which the resistance of the molecules of the material begins to break down rapidly and sudden large increase in strain occurs without increase in stress. Okay. So, that is denoted by point C in this image. So, what happens uh, if you see stress at point B as well as point C, stress is almost uniform from B to C. Okay. However, strain has significant change. So, the point where sudden change in strain occur without having much change in stress, that point we can call as the yield stress. Okay. And uh, uh, after we have ultimate stress, ultimate stress is basically it is the greatest stress at which failure of the material takes place. Okay. So, if you consider this um, point D that we denote as ultimate stress and from C to D we consider the region as plastic region. Okay. So, here from C to D we have permanent deformation and uh, D point is basically the maximum stress at which failure of the material take place permanently. And this is the region from C to D where Hooke's law will not be applicable. So, these are some of the properties uh, which we will consider in uh, designing. At what level we will consider that we will discuss when time comes. Now, next topic in this series is the membrane stress. Uh, here we have uh, we will define what is membrane stress and how these uh, how the expression related to these stress can be derived for a given system. So, for the purpose of design and analysis pressure vessels are to be subdivided into two classes depending upon the ratio of thickness to vessel diameter. So, ratio of wall thickness to diameter speaks about the class of pressure vessel. Okay. So, when this uh, wall thickness divided by diameter if it is less than 0.1 it comes under thin walled vessel otherwise it will be called as thick walled vessel. Okay. So, when the ratio of thickness of the wall to diameter is 0.1 whatever stresses are generated in the metal sheet or in the uh, component which we are going to design that stress is basically called as membrane stress because that is very thin layer and it, it will be treated as the wall of the balloon. Okay. 
and here we will derive the expression of membrane stresses on cylindrical shell. So, uh, here I am considering cylindrical shell where the length of the cylindrical shell is L and inside diameter is given as di ok and T is the thickness T is the thickness of this you see this is basically T thickness of metal sheet by which this cylindrical shell is prepared ok and this system is operated with internal pressure. So, when the system is operated with internal pressure it means internal pressure will be higher than the outside pressure outside pressure should be may be atmospheric inside it will be more than atmospheric. So, once it will be more than atmospheric it will try to expand it from internal ok and then um, we can have the failure if we will not uh, go for a proper designing of that vessel ok. So, when internal pressure will act it has certain uh, stresses or some stresses which are formed and these stresses are usually available along the length and around the circumference ok. Because of internal pressure operation we have two stresses one is called hoop stress and second is longitudinal stress in axial direction ok. So, to derive the expression that how we need to calculate thickness of that we will make the force balances around the object, but before force balances you should understand what are the stresses as I have told that there are two stresses hoop stress as well as longitudinal stress. So, longitudinal stress how that longitudinal stress will be formed because if you see this uh, image L is the total length from this side it is entirely co covered and from this side also vessel is closed. So, whatever pressure are acting over here that pressure would be try to expand these walls ok and try to expand this uh, try to uh, expand or, or, or we can say try to push this uh, uh, head or this closure ok. So, once it will push this closure uh, what happens it create stress in longitudinal direction ok because it will try to open the open those two ends. So, due to this whatever stress are formed that we can call as longitudinal stress ok and what is hoop stress? Hoop stress is when internal pressure is acting inside it will try to expand the diameter it will try to increase the diameter because continuously it pushes. So, that you can understand through this, this diagram that um, all pressures uh, pressure will try to op expand this uh, periphery from inside ok. So, what happens when it will expand it will create stress at this direction ok and when it will uh, it will uh, give uh, and when pressure is applicable to this it will give stress in this direction. It means this is basically the circumferential stress if a circular shape I am considering it will try to um, uh, the pressure will act upward as well as downward. So, it will try to expand this it uh, whenever failure will occur it will try to uh, it will be failed from in this side. So, all these stresses will cause uh, circumferential stresses or which so, all these stresses will create circumferential stress and we also call this as tangential stress as well as hoop stress ok. I hope you have understood what is hoop stress uh, that we is basically the circumferential stress ok. So, for design purpose I need to make the force balances in this object. So, let us start with the circumferential stress or hoop stress or tangential stress. Now, what happens over here whatever uh, stress uh, hoop stress I am telling that is basically sigma 1 here as well as sigma 1 here in this diagram ok. So, this sigma 1 will be generated due to force F which is applicable to this direction only. So, that force is uh, basically balanced by all vertical component of this up to this section 
ओके वर्टिकल कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ ऑल फोर्सेज विच आर एक्टिंग इन दिस रीजन विल बी बैलेंस बाई एफ इन द सिमिलर लाइन वट एवर एफ इज देयर दैट विल बैलेंस ऑल कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ दीज फोर्सेज इन अपवर्ड डायरेक्शन ओके सो टू मेक द बैलेंस इफ यू सी here i am taking 2f why i am taking 2f because i am making the balance in half of this image okay so f is there and f is there so that would be 2f how it is uh, uh, balanced like 2f equal to 2 integrating from 0 to pi by 2 integrating from 0 to pi by 2 and if you see here if i am considering this particular uh, section where this angle i have taken as theta okay so acting area of pressure uh, in this region would be this distance into length in this way okay so this distance into length how how i can define this length that would be uh, di by 2 sin theta so um, how we can define this distance that is r sin theta r is basically di by 2 into sin theta and when i am integrating this expression from 0 to pi by 2 it will give all forces in this particular section so here you see that 2 p p is the internal pressure l into this this would be the acting area for a small angle theta and that will be uh, integrated using d theta when i resolve this expression i can have pl and di so from this i can extract f as pli by 2 okay now the hoop stress in shell can be obtained as sigma 1 equal to f by a sigma 1 you see here and that uh, is basically f by a a is what a is this acting area i hope you are getting it so a is basically this acting area and that is t is the thickness of that uh, um, sheet along the length that would be the acting area so here we have sigma 1 as pl di by 2t l and that will be p di by 2t so sigma 1 will be equal to p di by 2t this is the final expression of hoop stress okay and these expressions are valid for thin walled vessel where t by di is less than 0.1 so here this is uh, this expression we have derived considering hoop stress in thin vessel uh, and usually if i am considering a uh, thick vessel there we have radial stress also here we have only consider circumferential as well as longitudinal and we have not consider radial because in thin cylinder uh, along the radius stress will not vary significantly however if i am having significant thick cylinder uh, inner surface to outer surface uh, continuous change in stress is observed and that we call as the radial stress and that we will discuss when uh, we derive the expression for thick cylinder okay now another expression i am having considering longitudinal stress that is sigma 2 and uh, here uh, sigma 2 basically uh, represents longitudinal stress and that would be balanced by the force which are acting on the cylinder in longitudinal direction okay so if you consider this particular image here we have sigma 2 sigma 2 will be applicable in this region okay in this whole region sigma 2 will will act so that uh, sigma 2 would be what that pressure into acting area acting area uh, will be this area so how i can define that pi d into t what what is d d is basically the average diameter here and that we can uh, uh, write as d i plus t or if outer diameter is known that should be d not minus t so pi d is basically the periphery into t that would be the acting area so pi d t sigma 2 will be equal to pi d i square by 4 into p p is the internal pressure which is acting on whole cross sectional area of the vessel because it is acting in whole this area so that would be pi di square by 4 after resolving this we can have expression of sigma 2 as p di square by 4 td 
where d is d i plus t as I have already explained and this is again valid for thin cylinder where t by d naught is less than 0.1. So, in this way we have derived the expression for uh, hoop stress as well as longitudinal stress and based on this let us solve one example so that it will be more clear. So, here I am having example 2 where a thin cylindrical shell having 3 meter inner diameter and 12 meter length is being operated at 3 mega Newton per meter square g. What is this g? g is nothing but the gauge. So, pressure is given in gauge. So, why I am considering pressure in gauge that we will discuss later on. What we need to compute is the thickness of shell if allowable stress of the material is 200 mega Newton per meter square. So, what is allowable stress that uh, again we will uh, have a separate lecture uh, to define this and there we will discuss when time comes. Please consider this allowable stress right now as it is. Okay. So, let us start the solution here I am having d i uh, and length and internal pressure is given 3 mega Newton per meter square and allowable stress we have equated to sigma value either sigma 1 or sigma 2 whatever expression I am using uh, in that expression sigma will be replaced by allowable stress. How it is uh, replaced by allowable stress that also will be discussed in upcoming lectures. So, sigma 1 and sigma 2 expressions uh, these expression we have already defined considering sigma 1 we can calculate T as 1.05 into 3 into 3 divided by 2 into uh, sigma 1 will come over here once I take T from this expression. Now, what you need to focus on what is this 1.05? See, when I am operating the vessel at a particular pressure, usually I design a value higher than this or we can call that as over design because failure should not occur. Therefore, the uh, pressure we are whatever pressure we are considering that should be slightly higher than the pressure at which I need to operate and usually that value we take as 5 percent extra. So, 1.05 into 3 resembling to design pressure. So, after solving this we can have thickness 23.6 mm. Considering longitudinal stress we can calculate uh, thickness as T equal to 1.05 why it is that we have already discussed and then 3 into 3 into 3 divided by 4 200 because sigma 2 will come um, at the bottom into d plus t. So, here you see t is coming here also as well as here also so that you need to uh, solve it properly and the final answer would be 11.77 mm. So, among this as this would be of higher thickness we can consider this 23.6 mm as final thickness. So, in this way we can uh, uh, solve the problem or we can design the system considering membrane stresses and which are applicable for T by D naught is equal to less than 0.1. For higher thickness we will derive the expression separately and that will come under thick walled vessel. And here I am having some reference books which you can follow to study the topic in detail. Now, we have the summary of the video and this summary is combinedly written for uh, lecture 2 as well as lecture 3. And here stress and strain are defined along with types of each, Poisson's ratio of a material is defined, stress strain relationship for biaxial as well as triaxial system are discussed and mechanical properties of material are discussed, membrane stresses are defined and expression of membrane stresses for cylindrical shell are derived. So, I hope you have idea how to compute uh, the thickness for membrane uh, stresses, how to derive the expression for stress strain relationship for a given system and uh, that is all for now. Thank you.